Welcome back to this week's technical, the repro topics keep on coming. Today we're talking about the what's and why's of teaser balls, those are vasectomized balls. As ever, if you want to catch more of these technical videos and the vlogs, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it, that gives you notifications about new videos. And on a selfish note, it does help to grow the channel hugely. Otherwise, on with the technical. Lots of sheep farmers in the UK, New Zealand and beyond are familiar with the use of vasectomized rams or teaser rams. The reason we use these is to take advantage of a phenomenon called the male effect. We've done a technical on the use of these teaser rams before. In short, the presence of an entire male sheep before the start of breeding helps to synchronize the estrus or heats of those ewes. Therefore, when the breeding or stock rams go in afterwards, those ewes should come on heat in a nice tight pattern, and then come the spring and lambing time, they should also lamb in a reasonably nice tight pattern, giving a more uniform lamb crop and hopefully making better use of staffing. The reason the rams are vasectomized is because we want them to really go in and go through all the motions of breeding these ewes. To do this, they're going to need to produce testosterone. If we castrated them, they wouldn't be producing testosterone. Their libido would also fall away dramatically. Of course, if they were entire, all we'd be left with is a bunch of early lambs. By vasectomizing them, we leave the testicles intact. They're producing testosterone, but we eliminate the possibility of those rams being fertile. Now, bulls can also be vasectomized. There are a handful of different surgical techniques to accomplish this, but it's not for the same reason as for sheep. When compared to ewes, cows don't seem as persuaded by a male of the species to be synchronized in their heat activity. Don't ask me why, perhaps there's some evolutionary advantage of sheep being synchronized in this way. Perhaps rams were fewer and farer between than bulls were. Perhaps because unlike cattle, they are seasonal breeders, there's an added advantage to this. So what are the reasons for using a teaser bull? When you ask people, there are two main factors. Number one is heat detection. Of course, those of you who work with cattle and use artificial insemination, you'll be aware that heat detection, which drives submission rate, is a wildly important component of successful fertility. In the UK, that's most dairy herds and increasingly suckler or cow calf herds. If you have a young virile teasable in amongst the cows, the idea is they do a lot of the work for you. They're mounting cows, they're rubbing their tail head, they're getting all together very excited and stirring the pot up. That makes those heats more obvious for whoever is recording them and therefore increases the chance that those females that are on heat are going to be submitted for mating. That's going to raise your submission rate and hopefully increase other important parameters of fertility. Some of you will have seen a chin ball mating harness in action that's what that ball is wearing in the thumbnail for this video. They're really the teaser bull equivalent of rattle or a crayon harness. This harness dispenses paint from when the bull is rubbing or jumping. As the bull rides or rubs against a cows that are on heat, it releases paint, making it very obvious who is on heat. The evidence base for using teaser balls in this way is well established and is strong. When we come on to the second potential use of teaser balls, this is less true. Some farmers will also use teaser balls to encourage non-cycling cows, we talked about them in a recent technical, to start cycling again. The idea being, again, you throw a young bull in there and he stirs them up. Something about him being in the herd kickstarts that reproductive system. This should improve the calving to conception ratio, meaning more cows in calf earlier and with fewer drug interventions, which are a common treatment for these non-cycling cows. Compared to the heat detection benefits, the evidence is a lot more mixed for both dairy and for beef. In one of the more prominent beef studies I found, cows exposed to teaser balls came into heat earlier than controls, and this was determined by measuring hormone levels in the blood, but this didn't actually translate into a significantly different calving to conception interval for those exposed to the teaser ball versus controls. When I was doing a bit of homework for this on the dairy side, I was pointed in the direction of this excellent resource, AgriScience. This is run by two agricultural scientists here in New Zealand. I can't take any credit for this. This is really just a summary of their summary. I highly recommend going and having a look at the website. It is first class, especially if you are a vet or an ag student. There's loads of really, really good livestock science topics. If I'm honest, I'm slightly embarrassed I didn't find it sooner. The gist of their summary is this. There's surprisingly little 
evidence either way on the topic. They reviewed a number of studies, some from the US which suggested the teaser balls showed no benefit to fertility, and one bigger study from New Zealand. This was the Canterbury teaser ball study, which did suggest a benefit from exposing non-cycling cows to teaser balls. Although the team at AgriScience did express some reservations at the experimental design of that Canterbury study. Overall, because of the lack of and variety of evidence, their conclusion was there may be a benefit of using teaser balls to both submission rate and four week in calf rate. That's about as certain as we can be. For more detail on this, again, I highly recommend going and having a look at their site. The links are in the video description. You can also find them on social media. So what does this mean in practice? If you are thinking about using a teaser ball, the first person you should go and talk to is your vet before making a decision either way. Several farmers I've met are adamant that the use of a teaser ball has made non-cycling cows come back into heat quickly. I think in the absence of any decent evidence, I think it would be foolish to dismiss these sorts of anecdotes. Then again, I know several farmers who are adamant that hanging holly bushes up in sheds prevents ringworm. You know who you are. And I think it's important to remember there are several different factors that feed into the rate of non-cyclers in a given herd. If their rates of endometritis, of mastitis, of poor body condition, and so on are high, throwing a teaser ball in with those cows is unlikely to be the panacea that some people might imagine it to be. Whatever the reason for using a teaser, there are several recommendations it is sensible to follow when sourcing or choosing a teaser ball. The ideal teaser ball is young, old balls can actually be too discreet compared to yearlings which can make a right mess and make it really obvious which cows are on heat, and a virgin to reduce the chance of bringing on and spreading venereal disease like Campylobacter. Breed wise you could really use anything. The general recommendations again tend to be for something quite thrifty. Good temperament is important. That's why you don't often see many pure dairy teasables. Probably something like an Angus or an Angus cross is going to be pretty good. They're hopefully going to be pretty sturdy, pretty thrifty and have decent libido and a decent temperament. Remember these guys are actually going to be working pretty hard, probably as hard as a stock ball would. Age and breed also feed into size. Again, older, heavier bulls can be more likely to cause bullying injuries, especially in smaller cows or heifers. If you're considering buying a teaser bull in, again, the general principles of biosecurity apply. I would say go and talk to your vet about what vaccinations he might want to have before coming on, any particular tests he should have before being taken out of quarantine. Alternatively, from a health point of view, it might be easier to retain some beef cross calves out of your own herd. This would maintain biosecurity, and after a season's work, they can still be sold as a reasonable young, reasonably prime beef animal. Again, assuming you're using a yearling and assuming you have the sort of UK standards related to age. Because we're looking to maintain a reasonably good libido, decent temperament, and keep the size of these teaser balls small, it is a sensible recommendation to replace your teasers every year. When we're talking about ratios, you probably want to be around one teaser ball to 50, probably not much less than that. And always take care if you're mixing unfamiliar balls. It's a very good idea to run new teaser balls with some, say, pregnant cows for a few days, just so they can get used to spending time with cows and also perhaps get used to novel surfaces like concrete. If they've always been at grass and suddenly they're trying to mount cows on concrete, it's good for them to get some practice before they go to work. If you're a block carving herd, introduce him as you would other types of heat detection, ideally no less than three weeks before your planned start of mating. It's important to note that he will still have some viable sperm left in his system for up to two months after the vasectomy. So chucking him straight in after his vasectomy with cows is probably a no-no unless you want some very early calves. So you need to get him made in good time. If it's starting to get a bit tight time-wise, talk to your vet. There may be a few things like perhaps getting him tested before he goes to work that you can do. And last but not least, remember these are still bulls with all the testosterone and attitude that that brings. Keep your wits about you when handling them. So that's a quick introduction to teaser bulls, why people use them and some general recommendations around their use. In my opinion, I think they're potentially a fantastic and relatively cheap way to improve heat detection, especially where there are limits on labor and how much time and manpower you can commit to doing that. As for bringing non-cyclers back into estrus, I think the jury's out. Again, go and talk to your vet about what they think about that. Could it be helpful for you? And again, if you enjoyed that, don't be afraid to give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Click subscribe and ring that little bell next to it. I'll see you next time.